The verdict in the Derek Chauvin trial was read today. He's found guilty on all three charges, which is a pretty big deal considering all the injustice we've been dealing with in this country regarding policing. That includes the guilty charge for second degree unintentional murder, guilty on third degree murder, and also guilty for second degree manslaughter. So of course, we're gonna get lots of different reactions to these convictions, especially from right wingers and Greg Gutfeld, Fox News host couldn't help himself. He jumped in right away with this statement. Take a look. And now I'm gonna just get really selfish. I'm glad that he was found guilty on all charges. Yeah. Even if he might not be guilty of all charges. Oh my God. Oh. I am glad that he is guilty of all charges because I want a verdict that keeps this country from going up oh. in flames. Uh uh. Oh my goodness. No. What do you mean? Look, Greg, listen. What do you mean? No, I'm at least being honest. I, my my ta my neighborhood was looted. Greg, I don't ever want to go through that again. We do not sacrifice individuals for the sake I'm of I'm saying he's guilty. I'm saying I'm glad about the verdict. I'm glad about the verdict even if he wasn't guilty of the things he was convicted of. That's that's what Greg Gutfeld said there. So, he's actually not happy with the verdict. He finds the verdict Incorrect, or I mean, it's amazing. I mean, did he sit on the on the jury? Did he listen to all the compelling evidence? Did he listen to the police chief for the department testifying under oath that what Derek Chauvin did in kneeling on the neck of George Floyd and essentially murdering him was not actually part of the department's policy. It was not part of their training. He was not supposed to do that. I mean, the, the police chief, and we know that in policing, there's this culture of everyone looking out for one another no matter what. And in this case, you have the police chief testifying against Derek Chauvin. But it does, mm -hmm. none of that matters to Greg Gutfeld, Francesca, none of that oh. matters. Yeah. No, and it's funny because I think Janine Pirro tries to jump in and initially you're like, you hear the no, oh, like that's terrible. And I'm like, is that Juan Williams? Like who's, you know, who's saying that? Is it like one of the less crazy Fox correspondents? And it's Janine Pirro who's basically like, no, we shouldn't sacrifice. And I think she means Derek Chauvin, like just to like prevent our cities from being looted, supposedly. So she's like defending Derek Chauvin and is it just of course she is because she's the worst. But you know, like Gutfeld is is doing what the right is going to continue to do around Chauvin, and they have been right. Whether it's Shapiro, whether it's it's Gutfeld, whether it's going to be Tucker Carlson, and I know we're going to talk about him. But if you if you at all if you kill Black Lives Matter protesters or you kill a black person, you will immediately. Become a martyr. Doesn't matter if you're a, mur a murderer by law, you're gonna be a martyr. And so, honestly, looking at 40 years that Chauvin may get, I don't know. I would say that's gonna be more like 12. It might even be more like eight. It might even be more like four. And you can bet that he's gonna come out and be a martyr for the right and will completely lean into it. Maybe he'll run for office. I'm so sorry to paint this picture, but I think people who've been in this struggle for a long time well know that sadly that is what happens. And so, you know. Yeah, Gutfeld's claiming that he cares about cities. I think they're cool with the massive amount of like Fallujah tanks that are rolling through Minneapolis right now. I think everyone's safe, not safe from police, but definitely safe from demonstrators. I mean, the New York Times actually had a, a, a great piece recently that looked into the militarized response to Black Lives Matter protests last summer and how that was ineffective policing that only escalated violence during these demonstrations. You know, we keep hearing about the looting. We keep hearing about, you know, businesses getting broken into. Well, rather than spending all of that manpower with the cops, essentially brutalizing protesters who have a legitimate reason to protest, they could have protected those businesses. They could have mm -hmm. focused on that, but they didn't. 
And no one ever talks about that, right? Um, there's a reason why the only thing you see in the media, and Brett Ehrlich made this point, he's absolutely right. The media is not just gonna cover peaceful protests. They're mm-hmm. gonna cover the violent angle to it because that's the sensationalized angle that's gonna get the eyeballs watching the program, right? right. But is that is that indicative of what the, the movement is? Is this something that Black Lives Matter um, is encouraging people to do, to engage in violence and looting? Of course not, of course not. But it's the narrative that the right wing likes to run away with because they wanna distract and deflect from the very real problem that we're seeing in this country when it comes to policing. My guess is they do it because of the racial angle that they want to just minimize and pretend like it doesn't exist. But policing is brutal overall. It disproportionately impacts communities of color, but it doesn't matter if you're an elderly woman with dementia. It doesn't matter if you're an elderly man protesting in Buffalo, New York. They will brutalize you if you dare to challenge their authority. And that is a problem. It's should certainly be a problem for right wingers who claim that they have a problem with big government, mm-hmm. right? When big yeah. government's cracking your skull, they're okay with it though. Absolutely. I just want to mention though that like one of the the other pieces of this testimony, I know we're not going to go through the whole trial, but like the other thing that stuck out to me that I think is really important is the ways that a lot of right wingers will say, you know, oh, well, you know, you're you're uh, you just don't like the police cuz like you don't live in a high crime neighborhood or like, you know, the police are here to protect, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the testimony of the store clerk who called the police because he thought that George Floyd had used a counterfeit $20 bill. And he testified that he wishes he didn't call the police because they didn't help. They actually just murdered a man outside of the store where he worked, right? And it's a perfect example of like, here is a minor, minor infraction or whatever, you know, whatever it is, you know, counterfeit $20 bill, by the way, a lot of homeless and and poor folks do that. Like it happens a lot. It is when you murder someone over that, you're murdering someone over the crime of being poor, all right? Mm-hmm. But like it's a perfect example of that. Here you have this gentleman who's like, I really I wish I hadn't called cuz we probably could have solved it ourselves. And I think that's where the BLM movement, movement for black lives and other folks have really sort of set this bar is like how can we reimagine Safety, you know, yeah, there was a problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, the store, the, the clerk was scared. He didn't want to be on the hook for 20 bucks if he accepted it. But was there, is there someone else to call who's not armed, who's not rife with institutional racism, who can actually de escalate, who can talk to George Floyd as a human being, right? And, yeah, and yeah. have this whole thing avoided? You know, and, and also, yes, policing absolutely needs to be reformed, but it's not good enough to just reform policing, right? Like if if we're concerned about crime, what are the underlying causes, right? Mm-hmm. Like what what I mean, there's a reason why crime did increase during the pandemic. And many of those crimes were crimes of desperation. We're talking about burglaries, robberies, those types of things. I'm not justifying it, but you do have to take a step back and ask, okay, well, what are the underlying problems, societal issues here that we need to actually pay some attention to rather than just simply, you know, focusing on band-aids to fix what we're seeing in various cities across the country? And and one other thing I want to point out, it's all about perspective, right? So if you live in a more affluent part of town, if you um, you know happen to be part of a specific demographic, then policing has probably been pretty great for you, right? You call the cops if you feel threatened, they're going to show up. You're not worried about them brutalizing you in any way. Understand that your perspective and your firsthand experience with policing might be very different from what other communities and other yes. people, um, other demographics are experiencing. So that's that's the other part of this, right? Um, I, I would argue that everyone wants to feel safe. Everyone wants protection. It's just that not everyone in this country has gotten it from um, how policing is done in this country so far. And then one final thing that I have to say about Greg Gutfeld and other conservatives like him. Look, if they're worried about looting, if they're worried about um, 
activists engaging in violence. I would like to hear them respond to the double standard that they engage in on a regular basis where they minimize the criminality of the Capitol Hill rioters. Mm -hmm. They pretend like it was no big deal. And then at the same time, when it comes to demonstrations about something very legitimate, they'll go ahead and demonize them and defame them as nothing more than looters and rioters. Which by the way, in Florida right now, thanks to a law that was just signed by Governor Ron DeSantis, if you're a motorist and you decide to run over protesters on the road, you have immunity at this point. It's insane. Yeah, if there were sneakers inside of Capitol Hill, I feel like Greg Gutfeld would get upset about the looting there. Like if they if people were running out with anything other than like Nancy Pelosi swag, it'd be like, oh my God, it's looting. <laughs> but no, no, it's just Trumpers stealing the Constitution. What? That's yeah. fine. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.